All right, I have hit live from my end. Um, I'm going to wait for feedback from you folks. Please let me know in chat folks if you can hear me and see me all right. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Sridhar. AV is clear. What about others? Can you guys, uh, can you folks see me and hear me all right? Awesome, awesome, Meera. Thank you for confirming and welcome to the session. All right, great. Uh, Bharni, Mahesh, thank you. Thank you for confirming. Perfect, folks. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, I, uh, uh, some of you might have attended my, uh, I did a couple of sessions recently. Um, on VRC Blitzkrieg, so I'm, uh, some of you might have attended it. Some of you are probably new. So uh, uh, the folks who are new, just very quickly, I'll introduce myself. My name is Jatin. I'm the head of verbal ability and reading comprehension and student care at 2 -IM. So I take care of the overall content development and uh, training delivery for VRC at 2 -IM. All right, that's a quick introduction. Now, this session is called VRC Blitzkrieg. So basically what we do in these sessions is we discuss past year papers. Okay, so in the couple of sessions that I did a few weeks ago, I discussed uh, slot three from 2021 because we, we weren't able to finish that last year. And now we have, uh, having done that, we are starting with CAT 22 papers today. So that's why we're doing slot one and we're going to do discuss two RCs today. Um, you can see the names there. The names don't matter because as you would know, in CAT, you don't get titles for RCs. I've just put those titles for reference. Okay, so I'm going to discuss first two RCs for uh, from slot one CAT 22. Now, uh, in order to make the best use of this session, when you come to this session next time, please read the passages in advance. Okay, so because I'll only be able to give you a limited time today to read the passage. So please read the passages in advance, comprehend it, and then come to the session. We'll solve the questions together. Okay, that is if you want to make the best use of this session. Now. If you want to access passages for this session, you can go in the uh, video description, the YouTube video description section. You will see a link there. You can click on that and that will give you the um, the passage link. Okay, let me also send it on chat. Right, so I've sent it on chat as well. Just click on it. Please read the passages from there not from the screen because the screen won't have complete passages all right sounds good okay all right now before we begin please hit like okay uh, i have to do these things on youtube unfortunately but yeah if you if you enjoy my sessions please hit like i of course keep reminding you about this as we as we go forward okay so let's should we begin and of course on youtube there's a lag of um your responses which annoys me as a teacher because I as a teacher I am very high on interaction I love interacting but of course on YouTube there's a lag okay let's get started now open the open the document the link is in the description of the video or chat please open that you will see a passage called Chinese copies okay it's titled Chinese copies again the title doesn't matter only read that passage okay so it's got about one two three four five paragraphs right in the in the document so read chinese copies once you're done reading please extract the main idea in two to three sentences and send it on chat okay i always tell my students to do this so see when you're reading always keep your eye on the main idea okay you should always read everything you should read each and every word of the passage but you shouldn't get stuck on words and sentences always focus on the big picture focus on the main idea and at the end when you're done reading Extract the main idea in two to three sentences and send it on chat. Then we'll start discussing it. All right. Okay. Go for it, people. All the best. Awesome, Abhishek. Thank you. I'm glad it helps. I'm glad it helps. We'll, we'll continue doing this for the next, uh, I don't know, eight weeks till we complete uh, 22. Again, folks, don't read it from the screen. Read it from the document in the description or I've sent the link on chat as well.
yeah ahmed i'll explain the meanings later okay first read the passage and always i suggest that when you're reading the passage don't fixate on words there are many words you might not understand but you should focus on the main idea what is the author's main message okay so so go with that for now and then i'll explain the meanings later okay i'm getting a couple of main ideas keep reading folks no rush okay again i mean no rush but i'll give you limited time that's why i said next time read the passages and come but keep reading i'll still give you a few minutes um couple of main ideas that have come through uh, prakriti okay and mahesh all right i've read your main ideas i'll comment on it later hi arimon no worries and start reading Gorad Mahesh no problem Interesting interesting I'm reading your main ideas good stuff folks keep keep sending them <clears throat> all right okay great keep reading um anish anish is saying main idea is cloning anish when you extracting the main idea you have to extract it in two to three sentences okay otherwise just one word or a few words will just be the title and that won't help you the whole idea of extracting the main idea is that you firm firm up the understanding of the passage in your head so when you extract the main idea in two to three sentences or even take a written note the comprehension gets better but for that you have to extract it in two to, two to three sentences All right should we start discussing the questions or does anyone need more time
Okay, now uh, let me know if you need more time, but I'll, in the meantime, I'll still keep commenting on your main ideas. Now, I won't give you the main idea right now because if I give you the main idea, then I'll give away some of the questions. Okay, so we'll discuss that later. But let me comment on a few main ideas. So um, let's let's discuss this. Where is this one? One of them. Um, right. Okay. Prakriti. Prakriti says. Uh, I think that's the main idea that I got in the beginning. Prakriti Das. The differences in ideologies between Eastern and Western countries about replicating. Now, Prakriti, you're very much on the right track. Very much on the right track. But the thing is, see, when you're expressing the main idea, the passage talks about the differences, right? The passage clearly tells you what is the difference in ideology between Eastern and Western countries about replicating. So instead of saying differences in ideology, outline the difference in your main idea. Because that is actually a part of the main idea. How does the East perceive copying versus how does the West perceive copying? That's a critical element of the main idea. But you should express that. Clearly express, you know, talk about their perception. Rather than say, just saying differences, talk about their perception. That becomes even a more robust idea. Okay. Let me comment a similar, similar thing. So, um, Right. Sagar says the difference between how Western and Eastern sees cloning and how they value the cloned object. Now, again, Sagar, very much on the right track. But rather than putting a question there, how express it? How do they perceive it? It's very clearly given that that, that is very clearly given in the passage, isn't it? So just talk about that. OK, then then it becomes more robust. But you folks are definitely on the um, on the right track. OK. All right. Perfect. Now, uh, let's begin. Let's start discussing the questions first, and then we'll come back to the passage and talk about it. Okay, I don't want to give away the answers. So, so let's do that. I'll run a poll for these questions. You can vote in the poll. All right. Okay, let's, let's move on. Okay, now read this question very carefully. Okay, now before, before that, when it comes to questions, please read each and every word of the question very carefully and each and every word of the option very carefully. Okay, don't rush through questions and options because that's where a question setter is going to trick you, right? So please, for question one, take your time. Read it, evaluate all the options, choose an option and vote in the poll, not in chat. I'll start the poll now. The poll is active. Please vote in the poll and take your time with this question. Very nice. Keep keep voting. Everyone should vote. Okay, don't worry. But see, you're learning right now. Of course, you know, no, I don't get to see who and how does that matter? Right? You're all learning. I think you should definitely vote. Think about the question, evaluate it, vote. If you end up making a mistake, learn from it. That's the whole point of these sessions. And at this point in time, you will make mistakes because you're learning, right? So don't worry about that. Interesting question. Yeah, it is. It is. The questions, I mean, slot one last year was trickier, quite tricky. 
If I compare it with slot 3, that the one that I attempted, slot 1 was definitely trickier than, trickier than slot 3. Okay, folks, I'm going to end the poll in 30 seconds. We'll have to go in the interest of time, yeah? Correct. Prakriti is saying the double negatives in the question makes it confusing. Yes, you're absolutely right. But you know what? Get used to double negatives. Practice a ton of questions with double negatives, even triple negatives. Last year, we saw triple negatives as well. But you know, the good, good news is once you practice enough number of questions with double negatives, it'll be fine. You, you'll get the hang of it. Okay. And of course, I'll give you the strategy as well. Okay, folks, I'm ending the poll now. I will, I will, I will simplify the double negatives. Okay. Now, here's this. You can see the, the vote percentages on your screen as well, hopefully. Here's how you have voted. And you, as you can see, it's quite split. Okay. Whenever the votes in my classes are split, it means that you found the question tricky and it's a tricky question. Okay. Now, the first, first choice, 37%, is with one. Okay. It's 37%, way less than 50. So clearly, you found it tricky. 25% for three. This is your second choice. 20% for 4, this is your third choice. And 16% for 2, that is your fourth choice. Okay. All right. Let me just confirm this. So 1, 3, that's your third. And then 4, 3, and then 2. Yeah, perfect. All right. Now, folks, uh, you can stop chatting and focus on the screen. I'll solve the question for you. All right. And then I'll explain the main idea as well. Don't worry. All right. Now, what does it say? Based on the passage... Which one of the following copies would a Chinese museum be unlikely to consider as having less value than the original? Read this question again. First of all, it's a long question. Based on the passage, obviously all the questions are based on the passage. Which one of the following copies would a Chinese museum be unlikely to consider as having less value than the original? The word that is important here is unlikely. So we have to pick an option. If the question, you're finding the question confusing, right? Then rephrase the question in your head. What does it say? Which one of the following copies? So there are four copies in front of you, four options. Which one of them would a Chinese museum be unlikely to consider as having less value than the original? Okay. Now, remember, what is the Chinese philosophy about copies? Right? There are two philosophies that are being spoken about. The answer for this in the first is in the first paragraph. Okay? The main Chinese philosophy about copies is that Chinese are okay with copies, isn't it? Per the passage, Chinese are fine with copies. Exact copies of the original Chinese are fine with it. They consider them to be equal value as the original, isn't it? That's what the first paragraph says. Okay? Let's go back and read the first paragraph. All right, it says the Chinese have two different concepts of a copy. Fancy pen, I'm, I'm, it's a proper noun, I don't know how to pronounce it, but fancy pen are limitations where the difference from the original is obvious. These are small modules or copies that can be purchased in a museum shop. For example, the second concept, okay, sorry, I'll, I'll read it again. The Chinese have two different copy concepts of a copy. Fancy pen are limitations where the difference from the original is obvious. These are small modules or copies that can be purchased in a museum shop, for example. This is the first concept. Second concept. The second concept for a copy is Fuzi Pen. They are exact reproductions of the original, which for the Chinese are of equal value to the original. Interesting. So they are exact reproductions of the original and for Chinese, they are as good as original. Isn't it? It has absolutely no negative connotations. Okay, let's stop here. Right now, remember this for Chinese exact reproduction of the original is equal value to the original, but it has to be an exact reproduction of the original. Let's go back to the question now. 
which one of the following copies would a Chinese museum be unlikely to consider as having less value? Unlikely to consider as having less value. There are two negatives here. Unlikely and less. Isn't it? That means we have to pick an option which the Chinese museum would consider as having equal value than the original. Flip it. Two negatives make a positive. So we have to pick, up, pick an option. Uh, which one of the following copies would the Chinese museum be consider as equal value to the original? And remember, according to the passage, an exact reproduction of the original is of equal value. So let's look, look for that option. Pablo Picasso's painting of Vincent van Gogh's original painting identical in every respect. So Pablo Picasso is copying Vincent van Gogh's original painting. And it's identical in every respect. What will be the Chinese view about this? Think about it. It's exact reproduction of the original. What will be the Chinese view? Would the Chinese consider this as less value to the original or equal value? Equal. Absolutely. That's what the sentence says, right? They will consider this as equal value to the original. Remember, that's what you're looking for. Change these double negatives to positive. They will consider as having equal value than the original. This looks like a good option. Park it. Park it. Why are we parking it? Because we haven't looked at 2, 3 and 4. All right. Okay. Let's go to 2. Pablo Picasso's photograph of Vincent van Gogh's original painting printed to exactly the same scale. We are comparing a photograph to a painting. Remember, it has to be equal. A photograph is not equal to painting. The Chinese wouldn't consider this as equal value. The Chinese would probably consider this as less value. We don't know. Nothing is being spoken about photographs. It's painting to painting. This can't be the answer. Pablo Picasso's miniaturized but otherwise faithful and accurate painting of Vincent van Gogh's original painting. This was his second choice. Is this an exact replica, folks? Is this an exact reproduction? It is not. It's not an exact reproduction. It's a miniaturized version. Remember, it has to be an equal exact reproduction for the Chinese to consider it as equal value. This is not your answer because of miniaturized. All right. Number four, Pablo Picasso's painting of Vincent van Gogh's original painting bearing Picasso's signature. Is this exact replica? Is this an exact replica? Pablo Picasso has copied it, but Pablo Picasso has put a signature there. It's not the exact replica. Now compare one with four. One is identical in every respect. Four has the signature. Between one and four, one is definitely the best answer. Okay. All right. Now I'll tell you what the question, the, this question becomes tricky because of this. Unlikely to consider as having less value than the original two negatives, it becomes positive. So what will the Chinese museum consider as having equal value than the original or to the original? That's what the question means. So try to reframe the question in your head and make it easier. Okay. And of course, practice a ton of these questions, double negatives, and you'll get used to it. All right. Let's move on. If you have a question, put it there. I'll come back to it at the end of the session. Okay. Let's go to question two. Go for it, people. I'll run the poll and you can vote. I got an answer within less than in less than 15 seconds and it was the wrong answer by the way because I can see the votes right now. 
be careful with these questions folks you can't answer a cat rc question in 15 seconds no matter how easy the question is right mostly there is a trap take a reasonable amount of time and answer the question evaluate this one is very tricky it's definitely a tricky question No problem sharing. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll end the poll in 30 seconds, folks. Sorry to rush you a bit in these sessions. It's just in the interest of time. Okay. But yeah. Good, Aryaman. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's how you're going to get, get uh, you know, that's how you'll start avoiding these mistakes. You just have to be very conscious. So that's why I say in, in, in class, right, um, I always tell my students, read the question and options like kids. Passage, of course, read it like an adult. Use all the effective reading strategies. Focus on the main idea. But when it comes to the question and the options, read each and every word like a kid would read. Okay, because there'll always be a trick in these questions. They'll in slip in one negative word, two negatives word, one way word will change the meaning of the option. So be careful of that. Okay, I will end the poll now. Okay, uh, Pratik says two and four are closed. We'll see. Great. Okay. Let's look at, I'll answer your questions, Srivats and Ashwin. Uh, let's look at the question first. Now, you folks, again, it's it's split, but you can see the majority is a little more. Okay. But still split. So 40% have gone with two. Okay. That's your first choice. 35% uh, have gone with four. Very, very close. Pratik, you're absolutely right. Two and four are very close. 12% um, for one and 11% for three. Okay, let's look at this question. This question is tricky. Okay, let's look at that. Um, which one of the, now look, see how I'm reading this. Which one of the following statements does not correctly express the similarity between the Grand Shrine and the Cathedral of Freeburg Minister? Again, I'll read it. Which one of the following statements does not correctly express the similarity between the Grand Shrine and the Cathedral of Freeburg Minister. Now, what does this mean? What does this question mean? That three options are similar. Similar between Shrine and Minister or express the similarity. One is not similar. Isn't it? That's what the sentence, that's what the question means. And our job is to pick this. Which option does not correctly express the similarity between the Grand Shrine and the Freeburg Minister? That's how you're supposed to decipher the question. If you want, you can take a note, just how I took it in your notepad to make it more clear. Okay. All right. Now let's look at this. So three will express similarity. One will not. Both can be regarded as very old structures. Is this true? Is this true for both Grand Shrine and Freeburg Cathedral? Let's go back. Always go back and confirm. Okay. <clears throat> now this is in the third paragraph, isn't it? Uh, second and third paragraph. Okay. The Far Eastern notion of identity is also very confusing to the Western observer. 
the grand shrine in japan is 1300 years old very old okay and for uh, uh, for the millions of japanese people okay let's move on the cathedral of freiburg minster in southwest germany is covered in scaffolding almost all year around okay and uh, the sandstone from which it is built blah 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 okay of course attempts are made to preserve the stones from the middle ages for as long as possible now what does this sentence indicate see the, 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 the grand shrine in japan is 1300 years old it's very old it's very clear cathedral of freiburg minster it says of course attempts are made to preserve the stones from the middle ages they have stones from the middle ages so obviously it's very old right so therefore both can be regarded as very old structures it is correct so it is similar remember we are looking for not similar this is not our answer let's move on both will one day be completely rebuilt now this was your first choice so you are indicating that this is not similar okay let's look at that both will one day be completely rebuilt all right okay let's look at that now it says let's talk about grand shrine but in reality this temple complex is completely rebuilt from scratch every 20 years okay so it is true for grand shrine isn't it grand shrine is rebuilt every 20 years so that statement is true for grand shrine now we have to see whether it's true for cathedral or not now let's look at that let's look at how it's described it's not very straight forward here the cathedral of freiburg minster in southwest germany is covered in scaffolding almost all year round what is scaffolding it's construction equipment okay when 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 you construct a building okay for the workers who are working on the building they have this external support that scaffolding so when a building has scaffolding that means it's 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 either being constructed or being repaired okay so it says it's covered in scaffolding almost all year round the sandstone from which it is built is a very soft porous material that does not withstand natural erosion by rain and wind after a while it crumbles as a result the cathedral is continually being examined for damage and eroded stones are replaced so continually the repairs keep happening continually continually means one after the other it's always in repair continually keeps repairing because the sandstones don't withstand natural erosions by rain and wind they get damaged and in the cathedral dedicated workshop copies of the damaged sandstone figures are constantly being produced of course attempts are made to preserve the stones from the middle ages for as long as possible but at some point they too are removed and replaced with new stones so pretty much all the all the stones in the cathedral will get replaced at some point in time isn't it they'll get damaged all parts of the cathedral will get damaged at some point in time and they will get re re replaced at some point in time so continually it will keep repairing so if it continually keeps repairing at one point it will be completely rebuilt isn't it think about it it will be if you continually repair if you continually keep replacing the stones one after the other a point will come when all the old stones are gone and then be replaced by the new stones so that means one day it will be completely rebuilt right it's not easy don't make me don't make it i, I have when i explain it sometimes it comes across as it's very easy it's not this option is very tricky but if you think about it one day the cathedral will also be completely rebuilt and hence this is not our answer because it's similar both are similar both one day will be completely rebuilt let's move on both were built as places of worship yes absolutely shrine was a work, worship place cathedral is always a worship place it's church so this can't be our answer now we left with four both are continually undergoing restoration what does continually mean one after the other one after the other in succession that's what continual means sorry i think i got disconnected apologies i hope i'm back okay i think i'm back now let me know in chat okay sorry i think i my internet is a little uh, patchy today okay so is this clear folks so hence the answer is both are continuing under, undergoing restoration 
right let me know in chat if i'm back if the av is clear and also if the if it's not clear the question let me know i'll explain it later okay awesome tricky question question 2 was definitely tricky okay so yeah so your second choice was right but it's a tricky question definitely a tricky question let's move on okay long question take your time to read and then we will discuss it yeah please hit the like button if you are enjoying the session i'll keep reminding you okay this is this is the kind of stuff that you have to do on youtube <laughs> all right okay in the meantime i'll answer that question somebody was asking me how long should you take to read the passage in the exam okay now see folks this will differ this will differ from person to person okay some people attempt all four passages it's rare but there are some people who attempt all four passages some some people do three passages some people do two passages okay generally if you want to be in the 95 plus percentile range then you'll have to read three passages plus verbal ability questions so it will really differ from person to person but if you're if your aim is to read three passages and do verbal ability questions then on an average you should complete the passage in 10 minutes passage and questions okay so you read the passage finish all the you don't have to attempt all four questions let's say two three questions but passage plus questions if you finish it in 10 minutes then you'll be able to achieve three passages plus verbal ability questions okay but again right now don't never force speed forcing speed will mess everything up okay so if you want to increase your speed do effective reading practice a lot and your speed will grow organically okay anisha is asking keep answering question 3 in the meantime i'll ask answer anisha's question um i went with 2 cuz ise which is a shrine is already completely rebuilt so one day it will be means future doesn't apply to ic views on this view no but uh, anish what you have to understand is that it's completely rebuilt every 20 years every 20 years they rebuild it okay so so that's what you have to consider i hope i'm getting a question correct so so keep that in mind i'll go back to it let's finish this i'll go back to it but every 20 years that cycle repeats okay give me one second Yeah, in reality, this temple complex is completely rebuilt from scratch every 20 years. So at one day it will be completely rebuilt. So it's true, right? Okay, I'll go back to it. All right, folks, I'll end the poll in 30 seconds. All right I think you have a few questions on question 2 I'll go back to it okay All right folks um ending the poll now Okay, let's look at the votes of this, and then we'll go to question two. Come back to question three. Okay, forty-four um, percent of you have gone with three. Okay, forty-four percent is with three, so that's your first choice. Twenty-three percent with one, that's your second choice. Twenty-one percent with two, that's your third choice, and ten percent for four, that's your fourth choice. Okay, we will go back to question two. Okay, there are some questions there. 
Okay, let's look at Anish's question. What is Anish saying? I went with two because ISC is already completely rebuilt. So one day it will be means future doesn't apply to ISC. Oh, okay. See, it says both will one day be completely rebuilt. So it's rebuilt every 20 years, right? That's what it says. But in reality, this temple complex is completely rebuilt from scratch every 20 years. So what is the problem? See, interpret the statement correctly. Both will one day be completely rebuilt. So it has. So let's say it's being. It, it was rebuilt today. Okay, let's say it was rebuilt today. And today, if you say one day it will be completely rebuilt, it's true. Because in 20 years, it's going to be rebuilt again. Or imagine, let's say if it's rebuilt in 2010, we are in 2023. And you say one day it will be completely rebuilt because it's going to be rebuilt in 2030. Right? So so there is no problem. It, it's, it's rebuilt again and again. So one day be completely rebuilt is absolutely fine. Okay, I hope this is clear. And both are continually undergoing restoration. Continually, continual, and again, check it in the dictionary. Continual means one after the other. There's a difference between continuous and continual. Continual is one after the other. Okay, and it has to be done in fairly quick intervals. So both are continually undergoing restoration. This is true for the cathedral. Because cathedral is continually under repairs. They keep replacing it. It's always covered in scaffolding. So it's true for that. But it's not true for shrine because shrine is rebuilt in 20 years. 20 year interval can't be called as continual. Continual has to be very quick. One after the other in rapid succession. Right? You Imagine Diwali lights. When Diwali lights are flickering, those strobing lights that we have in Diwali. Have you seen those lights? One goes off, one goes on, one goes off, and it goes like that. That's continual. Okay, so it has to be that in rapid succession. No, no, Sridhar, one day be completely rebuilt does not imply that it has not been rebuilt yet. I gave you that example. In 2023, if it's going to be rebuilt in 2030, the statement is absolutely correct. Okay, so it doesn't imply that. All right. Okay, let's move on, folks. I can come back to it at the end of the session if you want to discuss this further. All right. Now, let's look at this. Question three. Which one of the following scenarios is unlikely to follow from the arguments in the passage? Somebody was asking me how to interpret this question. Okay. Which one of the following scenarios is unlikely to follow from the arguments in the passage? Okay, let's break up this. There are four options. Okay, one, only one option can be correct. So one is unlikely. Remaining three options are what? Think about it. One option will be unlikely because there can be only one correct answer. Three will be likely. Unlikely, again, unlikely is unlikely. Unlikely is not no. But for simplicity's sake, say unlikely no and likely yes. For simplicity. Now what does it mean? Which one of the following past scenarios does not follow from the arguments in the passage? That means three scenarios follow from the passage. One scenario does not follow. Or in other words, three scenarios align with the passage. One scenario does not align with the passage. And your job is to pick the scenario that does not align. Okay. I'm not saying unlikely is no and likely is yes. It's not equal. Okay. I'm just trying to simplify this for you. Keep it unlikely because the meaning is different. But still, one scenario is unlikely to align. Three scenarios are going to align. We have to look for the option that does not align. Okay. I hope this is clear. Let's move on. Okay. A 17th century British painter would have no problem adding personal touches when restoring an ancient Roman painting. A 17th century British painter would have no problem adding personal touches when restoring an ancient Roman painting. Does this align? Does this align with the passage? Where does the passage talk about 17th century? Go back. Yeah. 
in the fourth paragraph. Okay, let's read this. Fundamentally, this is the same operation as with the Japanese shrine, except in this case, the production of a replica takes place very slowly and over long periods of time. This is the cathedral. In the field of art as well, the idea of an unassailable original developed historically in the Western world. Back in the 17th century in the West, excavated artworks from antiquity were treated quite differently from today. They are talking about 17th century West. In 17th century West, excavated artworks were treated quite differently from today. Now, how were they treated? They were not restored in a way that was faithful to the original. Instead, there was massive intervention in these works, changing their appearance. Okay, now let's talk about this. In the West, 17th century and now what happened in 17th century in the west they were open to changing they were open to changing the appearance now they are not open to changing the appearance isn't it where is the west now with copies the Chinese are okay with it. The Chinese are okay with copies. The West is not okay with copies. West is like original is sacred. We are not going to create repl replicas. Isn't that what the West view is now? But what was it in the 17th century? 17th century was different. There was massive intervention in these works changing their appearance. So in the 17th century, West was open to changing. Now they are not open to changing. Okay, let's go back. A 17th century British painter would have no problem adding personal touches when restoring an ancient Roman painting. Does this align with the passage or does, it, does this not align? Tell me in chat. I'll wait. I know there is a lag, but tell me. Remember, we are looking for does not align. Does, does number one align? Yes, it aligns. Okay, this aligns and hence this is not our answer. We are looking for not aligned. Okay, a 20th century Japanese Buddhist monk would value a reconstructed shrine as the original. Does this align? Buddhist is East. Would it value a reconstructed shrine as the original? East is okay with copies, isn't it? East is okay with copies. East says if it's an exact replica, we are fine with it. So then this is this alliance. This is not your answer. We are looking for not aligned. Okay. A 17th century French artist who adhered to a Christian worldview would need to be completely true to the original intent of a painting when restoring it. Is this the, is, was this the view of 17th century West? 17th century French is West. Does this align? Does number three align or not align? Does number three align or not align? Number three does not align. Okay, I'm going to wait for your answer. It does not align because see, you said one aligns, right? So three is opposite of one. So three cannot align. A 17th century French artist will not worry about it about the original intent in 17th century they were fine to change they were open to changing this does not align park this answer why because we haven't looked at four a 21st century christian scientist is likely to oppose cloning because of his philosophical orientation does this align christianity is against cloning according to the last paragraph so this aligns there is only one option that does not align and we are picking that hence the answer is three okay Tricky one again. Tricky one again, and you have to be careful. You have to be so that's why such see that's why I say when you're reading the passage, you extract the main idea. When you're solving questions, please go back to specific portions, reread that specific portion, and then answer the question. This question focuses on detail, so you'll have to go back, not reread the whole passage, but reread a specific portion. Okay. In the interest of time, I'm going to move on. Question four. Go for it.
anybody who has questions about previous questions stay back i'm more than happy to explain okay yes and please hit the like button yeah webber will explain it at the end okay okay sanskriti 20th century and 21st century let me look into it 20th century is 1901 sorry 1900 to 1999 that's 20th century 21st century is the one that we are living in okay 2000 to 2099 but we'll look at that All right I'll end the poll in 30 seconds folks Yeah Aryan you're absolutely correct question 4 the one that we're seeing right now was the trickiest one in this passage Okay so uh, Aryan is saying he got stuck at this in the exam uh, Aryan I'm not surprised okay had i had i had this be had this come in my exam i would have gotten stuck as well it is a tricky one it's very tricky okay in fact i was thinking about it when i solved it uh, i i sat and solved the whole slot for 40 minutes i would have left this question okay it's 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 that tricky you have to be careful of question selection as well right but of course we're going to learn from it but in the exam yeah i would have likely skipped this question because it's very confusing the options are very confusing Okay I'm ending the poll now All right, let's look at this. So um, number four. So thirty-seven percent has gone with number four. Okay, that's your first choice. Quite a low majority, and this is question is tricky. Twenty-four percent has gone with two. Twenty percent has gone with three. Seventeen percent has gone with one. Okay, one second. Uh, four, two, three, and one. Yeah. Okay. the value that the modern west assigns to an unassailable original has resulted in all of the following except okay unassailable means what okay unassailable original means some unassailable means something that cannot be attacked something that cannot be defeated that is unassailable okay so basically what this means is that the west considers original to be sacred isn't it that's the passage that's what the passage says the east perception of the of the uh, uh, replica is that if the replica is an exact reprodu reproduction of the original the east is fine with it the east considers it to be equal 
but the west is like no absolute no original is sacred please do not create a replica of the original so for the west the original is unassailable something that should not be attacked something that cannot be defeated something that is probably sacred for them okay so that's what it means so the value that the modern west assigns to an unassailable original has resulted in all of the following except now whenever you have an except question don't get confused first read the question without except okay read it without except so let's let's read it the value that the modern west assigns to an unassailable original has resulted in all of the following it has resulted in all of the following four options except one so first you read it without except then bring an except okay now remember your job is to pick this okay so first four all of the following except one so your job is to pick this one right so the value that the modern west assigns to the unassailable original has resulted in all of the following except so there is one option which is not the result of the value that the modern west assigns to unassailable original and we have to pick that okay let's look at this all right now it discourages them from making interventions in ancient art does the value that the west assigns to an unassailable original discourage them from making interventions in ancient art for the west original is sacred isn't it they like don't touch the original don't attack the original it cannot be defeated so if that is the concept in their head they are attaching so much value to the original then it will discourage them from making interventions in ancient art because they will want to retain the originality of the ancient art so this is not an answer remember we are picking one okay it's an except question so this the value results in this it can't be an answer okay let's look at two it discourages them from carrying out human cloning now this was a second choice okay does the value that the modern west assigns to an unassailable original discourage them from carrying out human cloning let's look at that in the last paragraph isn't it human cloning okay it says it is probably this intellectual position that explains why ancients have far fewer scruples about cloning than europeans what is scruples reservations if you have a scruple you have a reservation about something so it says asians have far fewer scruples about cloning that means asians by and large are okay with cloning they don't have reservations against cloning but the west has against reservations against cloning okay so it is probably this intellectual position that explains why asians have far scruples what intellectual position this intellectual position is definitely connected to the concept of unassailable original this is where you are getting that answer from okay let's go back so according to you you are saying that this value discourages them from carrying out human cloning let's park this okay let's come to 3 it discourages them from simultaneous displays of multiple copies of a painting if the west values the original so much will they have simultaneous displays of multiple copies think about it for them original is sacred they will not be okay with having simultaneous displays of multiple copies so it will discourage them this can't be a an answer remember we are looking for except okay all right let's look at this it allows regular employment for certain craftsmen does the value that they assign to unassailable original allow regular employment for certain craftsmen is there any indication of that they assign a lot of value to the to the original okay if the west is assigning a lot of value to the original wouldn't they go to lens to repair and restore the original answer this question if the west assigns so much value to the original wouldn't they go to the extent of repairing and restoring the original all the time that is the example of the cathedral isn't it
folks i'm asking you a question wouldn't they go to the extent of repairing and restoring them all the time just as in the cathedral yes they would so if that is the case it will allow regular employment for certain craftsmen these craftsmen will be required to repair and restore the original so hence it will allow regular employment for certain craftsmen so the value does result in this and that is clear in the cathedral example so this can't be an answer because we're looking for that one where the value does not result into it so the answer is indeed two now let me explain to you why it is true it's a little tricky okay we are saying that the value that the modern west assigns to an unassailable original does not result in this and the problem the answer is this because of the word one second you see this word here it is probably this intellectual position that explains why asians have far fewer scruples about cloning than europeans the author is uncertain about it there is a difference in certainty between the option and the passage and this happens is the author very sure that this intellectual position discourages europeans from cloning answer this question focus on this folks we'll have to take it step by step is the author absolutely sure that this intellectual position discourages europeans from cloning yes or no okay i should have gotten more answers by now the author is not completely sure there is a word probably there the author is uncertain whereas the option makes it look like no the author is very certain it discourages very it discourages them from carrying out human cloning there is a lot of certainty here and the passage is not equally certain now the thing is you will never get a perfect answer in cat you have to choose the best answer there is a difference in certainty here this option is very certain the passage is not certain and we don't have another choice we have ruled out 1 3 and 4 so the best answer that we have in front of us is 2 is it the perfect answer no but is it the best answer among the four yes so that's why we go with this very tricky question okay as i said i would have probably left this in the exam because i would have been stuck between 2 and 4 okay but the answer is definitely two all right okay perfect folks now in the interest of time i'm just going to quickly talk about the main idea here and then we will move on to the next passage see the main idea and you can compare this with your main idea all right what is the main idea here the main idea here is talking about <clears throat> the concept of copies now the concept of copies there is two there is a comparison here how the east looks at it and how the west looks at it now how does the east look at it the east says that an exact replica is fine the east is fine with it the east is okay this is this is what it says it's it clearly says that the second concept for a fuzzy pen there exact reproductions of the original which for the chinese are of equal value to the original this is the east view west says no okay original is sacred no replicas this is a very integral part of the main idea so you folks were on the right track how the east perceives it and how the west perceives it but you have to tell me how they perceive perceive it in the main idea so that's how they perceive it okay and then of course there is an example of the shrine and the cathedral the shrine is the east the cathedral is the west okay and then the author extends that to cloning in the last paragraph saying how this mindset this intellectual position about original and replicas influences cloning as well influences concept of cloning 
So Asians are okay with replicas. So they have far few reservations about cloning. The West is not okay with replicas. Hence the West is seems to be against cloning. Okay. But the main idea is definitely centered around this. All right. Okay. I'm happy to explain this passage in detail at the end. Let me know. Somebody was asking me about the exact meaning of fangzi pen and fuzi pen. See folks, it's already explained there, right? Don't get stuck on this word. The author explains what fangzi pen is and fuzi pen is. And is fangzi pen important for the passage? No. Fangzi pen is, you have to read it, but you will realize the main idea is around fuzi pen. It's not around fangzi pen. Fangzi pen is just in the beginning, but the focus is on fuzi pen and then the West perception of that. Okay. All right. Perfect. Let's move on to the next question, uh, next RC, and then let me know at the end. I'll come back and I'll explain the RC again. Okay. Go for it, folks. Now, read uh, the next passage about stoicism. Uh, go to the, uh, the link of the document mentioned in description. Open it and read it from there. Also, there is a pinned comment on chat, which also has the passages link. You can get it from there as well. Okay, please read this and then extract the main idea in two to three sentences, send it and then we'll start discussing the questions. Please like the stream folks and then please Start reading. Am I back, folks? Is the AV clear? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for confirming. Amrit Anshu and Weber. <coughs> All right, let's start discussing it. I think uh, folks are probably done by now. So we'll start discussing it. Just give me one second. All right, okay. Now, um, this passage is about stoicis, uh, stoicism, right? Um, of course, you don't need to know the meaning of what stoic is to understand the passage because the passage clearly talks about what stoicism is. Isn't it? In fact, the main idea, okay, is completely around the concept of stoicism. What is stoicism all about? And then the passage talks about that, you know, like the, the, it's philosophy, right? This passage is out and out a philosophical passage because stoicism is a philosophical concept. All right. So what we'll do is it's a little, uh, you might have found it a little complicated to understand because philosophy is like that. But actually, if you look at the CAT standard of philosophical passages, this one was still manageable. Okay, so we'll quickly go through it. I will try not to give you the answers and then we'll go to the uh, questions. All right. So it says Stoicism was founded in the th 300 BC by the Greek philosopher Zeno and survived into the Roman era until about AD 300. According to the Stoics, emotions consist of two movements. So it starts by explaining what Stoicism is. Isn't it? Okay. Now there are two movements here. The first movement is the immediate feeling and other reactions, example, physiological response that occur when a stimulus or event occurs. And then it gives you an example. Examples are great because authors trying to explain their point. 
Now, for instance, consider what could have happened if an army general accused Marcus Aurelius of treason in front of other officers. The first movement for Marcus may have been internal surprise and anger in response to this insult, accompanied perhaps by some involuntary physiological and expressive responses such as face flushing and a movement of the eyebrows. So it is giving you a situation, right? Understand that. So an army general accuses Marcus, we don't know who Marcus Aurelius is, doesn't matter. An army general accuses Marcus of treason. It's a big, big accusation. So the first movement or the first reaction for Marcus would be internal surprise and anger, followed by a physiological and expressive. What is the physiological response? A bodily response. Okay. An outward bodily response is a physiology. There is physiology and there is psychology. Physiology is outward. Psychology is internal. So don't confuse these words. So there will be an first, there will be an internal surprise reaction. And then an involuntary physiological response such as face flushing and a movement of the eyebrows. Now that is the first movement of according to stoicism. The second movement is what one does next about the emotion. So first is involuntary, isn't it? The emotion just comes up. Second is your reaction to that emotion. Second movement behaviors occur after thinking and are under one's control. Examples of second movements for Marcus might have included a plot to seek revenge. Action signifying deference and appeasement or perhaps proceeding as he would have proceeded whether or not this event occurred, continuing to lead the Romans in a way that Marcus Aurelius believed best benefited them. So there are two movements according to Stoicism. Emotions consist of two movements. The first one is a quick feeling followed by an involuntary reaction. Second is a reaction that you do after thinking. Okay, so second movement behavior occurs after thinking and are under one's control. All right, in the stoic view, choosing a reasoned unemotional response as a second movement is the only appropriate response. So now you should, by this time, you should know what stoicism is all about. Stoicism says that when you're faced with a situation, your reaction, the second movement after thinking should be a reasoned, rational unemotional response. Very easy to say that, right? I mean, most of us would have an emotional reaction. But stoicism says a reasoned unemotional response is the most appropriate response. Okay? Right. Let's carry on. The stoics believe that to live the good life and be a good person, we need to free ourselves of nearly all desires such as too much desire for money, power or sexual gratification. See, the main idea is definitely explaining what the concept of stoicism is so keep taking notes if you want what is the first point in the first paragraph what is the first main point that the second movement should be unemotional and reasoned That is the first characteristic of stoicism according to the passage. What is the second characteristic? No desires. Free ourselves of all desires. Okay. Prior to second movements, we can consider what is important in life. Money, power and excessive sexual gratification are not important. Character, rationality and kindness are important. Okay. So this is what is more important for stoics. And then they go on to compare this with Epicureans. So what does it say? The Epicureans first associated with the Greek philosopher Epicurus held a similar view as Stoics, believing that people should enjoy simple, simple pleasures such as good conversation, friendship, food and mind, but not be indulgent in these pursuits and not follow passion for those things that hold no real value like power and money. All right. So what they're saying is that Epicureans were quite similar to Stoics or they believed Similar, right? No desires was what Stoics believed. Okay, Epicureans had a similar view. Okay, I won't read this whole thing in the interest of time, but it goes on to explain what Epicureans believed in. All right, but the main idea is around Stoicism. All right, okay. As Oatley points out, the Stoic idea bears some similarity to Buddhism. Okay, now they're comparing it to Buddhism. Buddha living in India argued for cultivating a certain attitude that decreases the probability of destructive second movements. So they're saying, they're saying that Stoicism 
is similar to epicurean is also similar to buddhism right okay now through meditation and the right attitude one allows emotions to happen to himself so it talks about what buddhism says additionally the stoic idea of developing virtue in oneself of becoming a good person laid the foundation for three religions as with stoicism tenets of these religions include controlling our emotions lest we engage in sinful behavior i haven't read the whole passage but of course you have to read each and every word but the main idea is definitely around the concept of stoicism what is stoicism all about these two points how it is similar to epicurean to buddhism and it laid the foundation of different religions that's the main idea okay so you can compare this with your main idea and see if you're on the same page the words don't have to match but we should be on the same page okay let me know if it resonates with you right let's move on let's do question one on the basis of the passage which one of the following statements can be regarded as true i'll run the poll please answer it uh alpha max you don't need to move my camera box it's it doesn't overlap the content as far as i can see Okay, probably it was overlapping the RC. I'm not sure why, but I'll have to check on that. Oh, I think I was writing and it was overlapping. Sorry about that. My bad. My bad. Okay, I'm ending the poll in 30 seconds. I'm ending the poll now. Okay. Great. Now, uh, there's, there's quite a bit of majority, as you can see in this question. 69% of you have gone with three. So that's your first choice. Okay. 18% uh, has gone with one. 12% has gone with four. 
and no takers for two. Okay. All right. So 70%, almost 70% has gone with three. If you're, if you're correct, this is an indication that you found the question manageable. So let's look at it. Okay. On the basis of the passage, which one of the following statements can be regarded as true? Straightforward question stem. Okay. Which one of the following statements can be regarded as true? So one will be true and three will be false. Isn't it? Per the passage. So we have to pick the one that aligns with the passage. Isn't it? And three will not align. So let's look at it. The Epicureans believed in controlling all emotions. Did they believe in controlling all emotions? Now, we'll go back and reread that specific. Did they believe in controlling all emotions is the question. What does it say? Epicureans first associated with the Greek philosopher Epicurus held a similar view, believing that people should enjoy simple pleasures but not be indulgent in these pursuits and not follow passion for those things that hold no real value like power and money. The Epicureans articulated a view, enjoyment of relationship with friends, of things. In sum, these ancient Greek and Rome, Roman philosophers saw emotions, especially strong ones, as potentially dangerous. They viewed emotions and experiences that needed to be reined in and controlled. Now, it says... Did they believe in controlling all emotions? No, they believed in controlling strong emotions. That's what the passage says. So folks who selected this, correct, uh, correct Sridhar. Okay, folks who selected this, see again with these questions, you should go back to specific portions, reread it and then see whether it's correct or not. So read the option carefully. All emotions? No, the passage doesn't say all emotions. It says strong emotions. So this option is distorting it. This is not the correct answer. There were no stoics in India at the time of the Roman civilization. This is not correct. There's nothing in the passage that indicates that there were no stoics in India at the time of Roman civilization. So good job on, of not picking this. The stoic influences can be seen in multiple religions. Is this true? They laid the foundation for the three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. There is evidence here. Always look for evidence. Stoic influences can be seen in multiple religions. We are picking for true. Park this answer. The Stoics valorized the pursuit of money, power and sexual gratification. Valorized means adding value. Not adding value, considering it valuable. Sorry. So when you valorize someone... You consider it as valuable. The, did the Stoics consider money, power and sexual gratification as valuable? No, the complete opposite. Stoics said, let go of all desires. So this does not align with the passage. The answer is definitely three. Okay, well done. It's a manageable question, but good job on picking the right answer. Let's go to question two quickly. Yeah, glorify and valorize is, is their synonyms. Now, what is interesting here in this passage is if you know what Epicurean means now, the meaning is different from what the passage says. Okay, so be careful of that. Whenever you're answering questions, you should always answer it based on the information available in the passage. We don't bring in external knowledge. So if the passage gives you a definition of Epicurean, then we go with that, even if it's different from what you know. All right, so always look at it from the author's point of view and stick to the content of the passage.
there's a double negative in this question isn't it false and contradiction there is a way to solve this kind of question i'll explain it to you but first you go ahead and attempt it I'm ending the poll in 30 seconds. Okay, ending the poll now. All right. Yeah, it's split. It's a tricky one. The question stem itself is tricky. So 2 and 3 equal 30-30%. Okay, so this is your first choice and this is also your first choice. And then 23% for 1, that is also close. And then 16% for 4. Okay, so ideally should be 3 and 4. Anyway, let's look at this. Now focus here. I'll give you the trick to answer these questions. Okay, which one of the following statements, if false, could be seen as contradicting the facts or arguments in the passage. Now, whenever you get a question which says, if false, turn it on its head. Make it true. Okay, make it true. So now, it says, false, contradict. Isn't it? If you make this true, this will become, does not contradict. Is this correct? You have to change it, isn't it? So false, contradict, change it to true, does not contradict. This is the same thing. It's the same thing, okay? But don't try to attempt this question with this. It will confuse you. Go for this one. It's the same thing. So you change it, turn it on its head, make false true, contradict become, does not contradict. Does not contradict also means align. Isn't it? Yes or no, folks? Quickly tell me. So we have to look for an option that is true and aligns. Okay. True is very simple. True means you have to take these options at face value. You don't have to change them. You have to assume that they are true and you have to look for the option that aligns with the passage. Is it clear folks? Please tell me in chat. Okay. So look for true align. Let's do that. In the Epicurean view, indulging in simple pleasures is not desirable. Now we are considering this as true. Okay. Does this align with the passage? Let's go back and check. It says in the Epicurean view, indulging in simple pleasures is not desirable. Does this align with the passage? We have to see. And if it aligns, then this is our answer. Now let's go back and check what the Epicurean view was. The Epicureans first associated with the Greek philosopher Epicurus held a similar view, believing that people should enjoy simple pleasures such as good conversation, friendship, food and wine, but not be indulgent. So enjoyment is fine. Is indulgent fine? No. Okay, now it's a it's a very minor thing in the passage. You could have easily missed it. 
So that's why it's important to come back and reread that specific portion very carefully. Enjoyment is okay according to it, but indulging indulging is excessive. Enjoying is within limits. Indulging is you're crossing your limit. So Epicurean view says indulging is not okay. All right. What does the sorry? In the Epicurean view, indulging in simple pleasures is not desirable. Does this align with the passage? Yes, it does. So let's park it. Okay, because we're looking for a line. Despite practicing meditation and cultivating the right attitude, emotions cannot ever be controlled. Does this align with the passage? The passage tells you that when you meditate, okay, through meditation and the right attitude, one allows emotions to happen to oneself. It's impossible to prevent this, but one is advised to observe the emotions without necessarily acting on them. One achieves some distance and decides what has value and what does not have value. So here what it's saying is that emotions will happen to you. You can't prevent emotions from coming to you. But you can control them, isn't it? When you're doing this, achieving distance and decides what has value and what does not have value, you're controlling them. You can't prevent them from coming to you, but you can control them. But it says, despite practicing meditation and cultivating the right of emotions, cannot ever be controlled. But that's not true. The passage is saying, with meditation, you can control emotions. So this does not align. And therefore, it's not an answer. We're looking for true align. In the stoic view, choosing a reasoned, unemotional response as the first movement is an appropriate response to emotion. Is this the first movement, folks? Choosing a reasoned, unemotional response is the second movement. First movement is involuntary. Second movement is what you can control and what you can reason. So in the stoic view, this is not the first movement. This is the second movement. This does not align. The Greek philosopher Zeno survived into the Roman era until about 8300. Did Zeno survive or stoicism survived? Read that again. Stoicism was founded in 300 BC by the Greek philosopher Zeno and survived into the Roman era until about AD 300. How can Zeno survive for this long? Stoicism survived from 300 BC to AD 300. If you would have reread it, you would have gotten it. So this is not the answer. So true and align is number one. Okay, now you probably got this wrong because of this question step. So again, I'm saying turn it on its head. True, align or does not contradict. The moment you make it true, it becomes easy. Don't try to do the false one. Okay, let's move on. Question three. Go for it. Again, it's a specific question. Please go back, reread it and then answer.
Okay, I'll end the poll in the next 30 seconds. Ending the poll now. All right. Okay. So, um, first choice the forty percent has gone with one. Okay, that is the first choice. 23% with 4, 20% with 2, 15% with 3. Okay, it's a long question. It's a long question, right? And it's a specific question. It's a specific inference question. So I hope you went back, reread re -read the statement, understood it, and then answered. Okay, now let's see this. Through meditation and the right attitude, one allows emotions to happen to oneself. It is impossible to prevent this. But one is advised to observe the emotions without necessarily acting on them. One achieves some distance and decides what has value and what does not have value. In the context of the passage, which one of the following is not a possible implication of the quoted statement? Implication means implied, right? So you have to understand this quoted statement first in the passage along with context and then draw inferences from here. So it says in the context of the passage, which one of the following is not a possible implication inference is very similar. Okay, so which one of the following is not a possible inference of the quoted statement. So that means three are implications. Okay, one is not we have to pick the one which is not an implication. Is that correct? Right? Okay. So always with these uh, specifics, specific questions, go back, reread the context as well. Context meaning the lines above, the lines below. All right. Let's look at that. Okay. So as Oatley points out, the stoic idea bears some similarity to Buddhism. Buddha living in India in the 6th century BC argued for cultivating a certain attitude that decreases the probability of in stoic terms destructive second movements. Through meditation and the right attitude, one allows emotions to happen to oneself. It is impossible to prevent this, but one is advised to observe. We just read that. So what it's what this means is that Buddhism says emotions will happen to you, but create some distance between yourself and the emotions. Don't let emotions rule over you. That's what the statement means, isn't it? Create some distance, observe these emotions, and then see which emotion has value and which emotion does not have value. If it has value, experience it. If it does not have value, distance from it. Right? Okay. Additionally, the stoic idea of developing virtue is the foundation of religions. All right. Now let's go back. Let's see what inferences that we can draw. Number one. Remember, we are looking for an inference that we cannot draw. Meditation allows certain out-of-body experiences that permit us to gain the distance necessary to control our emotions. Okay, this is correct. Break it up. Break up this option. It's a long option. Break it up. Meditation allows certain out-of-body experiences that permit us to gain the distance necessary. Now, the distance part is being spoken about, isn't it? Meditation helps you to create distance. But does the passage say that meditation allows certain out-of-body experiences? What is an out-of-body experience? An out-of-body experience is that your soul actually leaves the body temporarily. Is that what the passage is saying? The passage is saying, yes, meditation can help you create the distance 
but does the passage talk about how does the passage say through an out of body experience where the soul is leaving your body no right it just says it helps you doesn't explain how an out of body is too extreme and don't use external knowledge doesn't look like we can infer this so let's park this emotional responses can make it difficult to distinguish valuable experiences from valueless experiences meditation helps you determine what has which emotion has value and which emotion does not have value and how is meditation doing that by creating a distance with emotions so through this you can infer that if you have an emotional response it will make it difficult to distinguish valuable and valueless experiences meditation is helping you to create distance from emotions which in turn is helping you to distinguish between value and not value but if you have an emotional response it will be difficult so you can infer this this is not your answer remember we're looking for not the observation of emotions in a distant manner corresponds to the second movement referred to earlier in the passage what is the second movement all about emotionless unemotional reaction isn't it unemotional reasoned reaction that is the second movement so the observation of emotions in a distant manner corresponds to it right this you can infer it's not an answer meditation in the right attitude in this instance implies an initially passive reception of all experiences what is a passive reception of all experiences if you active if your active reception of that means you're accepting all experiences but here it clearly says meditation helps you decides what is valuable and what is not valuable so initially it's passive for everything because you are at a distance then you decide okay this has value i'm going to actively receive it this doesn't have value i'm going to reject it so initially it is passive reception of all experiences so hence this is not your answer okay key one definitely tricky one it's longer it's convoluted you have to think about it okay but i hope this is clear please learn from it let's go to question 4 last one so the second movement talks about action while the option says observation yeah but it's corresponding right it doesn't have to be exactly the same shivachan these are two different things it says corresponds the correspondence that the similarity that you're drawing is observation of emotions in a distant matter with unemotional and emotionless so it corresponds it's not exactly the same but it corresponds Shree says, "If you're quite confident about the first option, yes, it is. It is. Remember, your job is to pick the best option possible. Just because one is correct, one is good, or one is okay, you might realize four is better than one. In that case, we'll have to pick. Uh, we'll have to pick the four, fourth option, and it happens. So you have to pick the best option. Hence, it's very important to go through all the options. So that's why I keep parking it till I go through all the options." Correct, Amrita. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, folks, go for question four. Please go back and reread the part about Marcus Aurelius and and um, draw inferences, and then answer the question. remember you have to choose the best answer okay
All right, I'll end the poll in 30 seconds. This is a tricky one. Were you folks stuck between two options? You should have ideally been stuck with two options. If you were evaluating the question correctly, you should have been stuck with two options. Okay, I'm ending the poll now. Thank you, Shri. Perfect, perfect. Right, I keep saying that I cannot, I cannot stress on that enough. Okay, uh, folks, when you're reading the whole passage, we focus on the main idea. Again, we read each and every word. Pardon the repetition. We read each and every word, but we focus on the main idea. We extract the main idea. We don't get stuck on details. But there are going to be questions around details. This one is, is a detail-oriented question. Hence, you go back to a specific portion, reread it, understand it, and then answer the question. Okay? I'm going to end the poll now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Interesting. Let's see this. So, uh, option two has the highest votes. It's 46%. So, that's your first choice. Option one has 37%. That's your second choice. 9% for three and 6% for four. Now, I was, I, ideally, everyone should have been stuck between one and two. Okay. If you were stuck between one and two, that means you were thinking in the right direction. So, three and four is definitely not the answer. I'll tell you right away. It is between one and two. And let's look at this. Okay. Please focus now. I'll exactly tell you how I would solve this question in an exam. Okay. Which one of the following statements would be an accurate inference from the example of Marcus Aurelius? Okay, great. So uh, Marcus Aurelius, fine. I'll go back even before the options. I don't look at the options first. I always go back and reread because options are designed to confuse you. So I'll quickly reread what Marcus Aurelius was all about. Okay, so it says, the first moment is the immediate feeling and other reactions that occur when a stimulus or event occurs. Okay, so it gives an example of Marcus Aurelius. For instance, consider what could have happened if an army general accused Marcus Aurelius of treason in front of other officers. The first moment for Marcus may have been internal surprise and anger in response to his insult, accompanied perhaps by some involuntary physiological and expressive. Okay, I remember this. Second moment also I remember. Great. So this is where the answers are. Let's go back. Now I'll quickly read what the options are. Marcus Aurelius was humiliated by the accusation of treason in front of the other officers. Marcus Aurelius was humiliated by the accusation of treason in front of other officers. Let's go back and confirm. Is this true? Can we draw this inference? For instance, consider what could have happened if an army general accused Marcus Aurelius of treason in front of other officers. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Okay, maybe I can draw this inference. I'm going to park it. I'll come back to it. Marcus Aurelius was one of the leaders of the Roman army. Okay, let's see this. Somewhere it says, the second moment is what done. The examples of second moments for Marcus might have included a plot to seek revenge. Okay. Or perhaps proceeding as he would have proceeded, whether or not this event occurred, continuing to lead the Romans in a way that Marcus Aurelius believed best benefited from them. Continued to lead the Romans in a way. Continued to lead the Romans in a way. So if he's leading Romans, then we can infer that he would be a Roman leader, isn't it? Okay. But let's park this. Marcus Aurelius was a Stoic whose philosophy survived into the Roman era. He was not a Stoic. There's nothing to do with Stoic. It was just an example of first moment and second moment. Marcus Aurelius plotted revenge in this question. No, nope, absolutely not. Now, between one and two, which one is better? We are looking for an accurate inference. Which is more accurate? Where is more certainty? Look at the first one. Consider what could have happened if an army general accused Marcus Aurelius of treason. Is this a hypothetical situation or a real situation? Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Alpha Max. You answered my question. It's a hypothetical situation. Can you be absolutely 100% certain? 
this is a hypothetical situation okay but here it says look at the other one mark continuing to lead the romans in a way that marcus aurelius believed best benefited from this tells you that this was reality this is a hypothetical situation this you this you can with reasonable certainty say that this is reality or if you want to compare it this is more real than this that is clearly a hypothetical situation but continuing to lead the romans in a way tells us that marcus aurelius was most likely a leader in the roman army so between 1 and 2 which one is an accurate inference or more certain definitely 2 and so answer is 2 it's it's confusing that's why i said that's why now now this demonstrates best option had you read 1 and are like oh i'm sure about 1 i'm not going to read 2 you would have gotten it wrong because 2 is a better answer than 1 1 is hypothetical 2 is more certain hence it's 2 okay that's why you have to read all the options you have to go back and confirm your understanding all right okay perfect folks so we're done with this session okay i hope you enjoyed it please uh, before you leave hit the like button uh, we're going to do these sessions regularly there should be one next week as well now we'll do the two remaining passages in the next week please pre read the passage and come prepared okay questions we'll solve together but read the passage in advance all right now if there are any more qu any questions about any of the uh, if you want me to discuss a passage first passage in detail i'm happy to do that or you want me to talk about a question please uh keep uh, put that in chat and i'm happy to stay back and mention it thank you rinku thank you i'm glad you found it useful um definitely join us folks solving past paper questions is the best way to practice rc okay no mock will no mock can come close to this right so what i would actually suggest is if you're coming next class do a 40 minute vrc mock if you want solve the vrc section slot 1 come or solve to uh, read two passages and come okay sanskriti says rc1 question this sanskriti is really worried about rc1 question 3 let's go back i think there was some confusion about centuries let's see that sanskriti okay thank you folks if you are leaving thank you very much for staying back otherwise stay back and we'll discuss these questions okay All right. So, Sanskrit is asked you one question three. Which one of the following scenarios are unlikely to follow from the arguments in the passage? Okay, 17th century French artist. Sanskrit, what was the question? Uh, I think your question was around centuries, right? Where is Sanskrit? Okay. So the correct answer is 17th century French artist. and the passage also talks about 17th century right 21st century doubt in second option 21st century 20th century right sanskriti oh a fourth option a 20 you talking about the fourth option A 21st century Christian scientist is likely to oppose cloning because of his philosophical orientation. So it's talking about a current century Christian scientist. Okay, this is likely to follow from the passage because the passage says Christians in general are against cloning, isn't it? The South Korean cloning researcher Wang Wu Suk, who attracted worldwide attention with his cloning experiments since 2004, 2004 is 21st century uh, Sanskrit. 2004 is 21st century. So here it says he found a great deal of support from the followers among Buddhists, while Christians called for a ban on human cloning. So 2004 is 21st century. Okay, so fourth is correct. the second option says 20th century japanese buddhist monk would value a reconstructed shrine as the original 20th century okay let's go back no but that is not connected to this that is not connected to cloning sanskriti 
this is a general statement a 20th century japanese buddhist monk would value a reconstructed shrine as original this has nothing to do with cloning so you can't correlate it with that passage option 2 is not connected to cloning sanskriti option 4 is connected to cloning option 2 simply says a japanese buddhist monk would value a reconstructed shrine as the original because this is the east view no no folks don't sanskriti don't even get into centuries here second option does not talk about cloning second option simply says a buddhist monk would value a reconstructed shrine as original this is the general east view right the general east view is with which which correlate coincides with buddhism buddhism is that anything that is a replica exact replica is fine correct so this is not connected to cloning this is connected to cloning all right okay got it good all right uh, let's see let's see let's see let's see can we do one para jumble just to break the monotony of our six i mean uh, the thing is see I, i the structure that i follow in these sessions is i'll do rcs and then i'll have one session on para jumbles para jumbles we have to do together because you'll you'll need to learn the strategy and then you'll need to do practice so para jumbles will be clubbed together okay rcs i understand sometimes can be monotonous right but you know we have to get rid of that as well i i understand what he's saying but we have to get rid of that emotion as well because if you're going to if you're going to go with the mindset that they are monotonous then your performance will get impacted but i i do hear what you're saying uh but yeah there's a certain structure to these sessions all right okay um vanamali says so small doubt the restoration and repair takes away the originality say for example if there's a damage in a mobile and there has to be some change then it's not original correct correct so vanamali what is the point there then what is it related to so west what the west says is that west is against replicas west is against replicas west wants to stick to the original as much as possible now the best case scenario for west would be oh original remains intact as it is but then that can't happen right you have to be realistic so if the original gets damaged they will repair it and that's the second best option for them but they don't want replicas they will stick to this keep repairing it Yes, it will lose its originality, but they don't have another option. Fourth option for what question, Manamali? Okay, I'll wait for that to come through. Okay, all right. I'll come back to that. Um, RC one question four. Sorry, that craftsman option. Okay. RC one question four. This is Sridhar's uh, question as well. Okay. the value that modern west assigns to an unassailable original has resulted in the following so it has resulted in allowing regular employment for certain craftsmen okay this is connected to the cathedral example the cathedral was in the west isn't it it was in germany right what happened with the cathedral the cathedral was constantly being repaired constantly they were replacing stones damaged stones they were getting in new stones but they were constantly replace uh, repairing it and it was connected to the unassailable original see the west believes that they want to stick to the original they don't want a replica but if the original is getting damaged they'll keep repairing it so when they keep repairing original all the time it allows regular employment for certain craftsmen isn't it because the original will keep getting older and will keep needing repairs again and again and again 
and that was illustrated in the cathedral example. So we can say the value, modern West values unassailable original. And since they value it, they will go to any lens to repair it. And if they are continuously repairing it, it will provide regular employment for certain craftsmen. Certain craftsmen who are expert in repairing and restoration. Alright, I hope this is clear now. Okay, Alpha Max, Sridhar, Vanamali, I think you folks have the same doubt. I hope this is clear. But let me know if it's not. Okay. All right. Now let me see. Shri is asking me: Is it possible to get 100% accuracy in RCs? Or one or two questions? That, oh yeah, good question. Shri. So uh, well, I mean, is it possible? Yes. But but I'll tell you, every RC will not every. I can't say this with 100% certainty. But typically in CAT, every RC will have one question which is very difficult. So typically what I tell my students is don't force yourself to solve all questions in an RC just because you read the RC. I know you read the RC, you spend time, but that doesn't mean you solve all the questions. Solve the questions that are manageable or if they're difficult, reasonably difficult. If a question is very difficult, like one example that I gave you was this one. Right? It is, it is tricky. Which one was that? Which one was was the one that we were talking about? It was this one only, no? Both will one day be, yeah, I think this one only. Or let's look at four. No, I think it's four. Four, okay. So, so this one was the most difficult question out of this RC. So don't force yourself to solve all questions. If it's a very difficult question, leave it. Right, so that's fine. So um, you can get 100% accuracy, but then in that case, you'll have to be very like over cautious. You'll have to leave the questions and all of that. See, in RCs, if you can get like a 90% accuracy, that's very good. So what I tell people is general guideline. Of course, this differs from person to person based on competency. But generally, I tell people if you're 90% sure of a question, mark it. And then overall, if your accuracy is 90%, you're doing very well. Now, again, this will differ from individual to individual based on competency, but the general guideline is this. Okay. Wise choice would be to leave it. Correct. This question, as I said, I probably in the exam, I would have left it. It's too tricky. It's too tricky. Too, too close options. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. I think I've answered all your questions. Great. Awesome. Good, good session, folks. I think you were very interactive. Good job. Um, keep practicing and then next week we'll uh, do the remaining two RCs. Okay. All right. All the best. Take care.